Welcome, Thomas. Holopainen, is that correct? Your finish is perfect. Oh, thank, thank you. you very thank much. You. From the band Nightwish, uh, we're glad to have you here at Linear Rock. Welcome back to Italy. And you are here to promote the new album of the band. And after mm -hmm. four years, actually, from Dark Passion Play, finally on 2nd of December, the new album, 7th Nightwish album, will be released. Imaginarum, okay? Mm -hmm. That's correct, okay. Yep. Uh, on Nuclear Blast again. Um, how would you introduce uh, the new album to the Italian audience? Is there going to be any surprises? Well, the big twist of this release is definitely the fact that we're also doing a movie, which is kind of related to the album, even though they are their own individual entities. But yeah, the movie is the big twist. But the album in itself also offers something completely new. Like uh, you'll find some jazz elements in there, you'll find some uh, Italo-Western <laughs> elements there, uh, some ethnic stuff, uh, Arabian kind of dance things and a lot of Celtic influences. So uh, it really is a roller coaster ride through so many different emotions and musical genres that uh, it just might take a few listens to oh. get it all absorbed. Okay. But, uh, also one thing which I think personally is quite crucial to this album is that it just might be the most uh, optimistic effort that we have done so far, especially compared with the last album, Dark Passion Play, this has much more light at the end of the tunnel. Okay. And uh, the sound, would you consider it um, more heavy than the previous one or it's still a lot symphonic? Uh, it's very symphonic. I wouldn't consider it being as heavy and as dark as the previous All one. Right. The metal elements are definitely still there and you can hear some hard punch of the drums and basses and guitars and double bass drums going on quite a few times, but I would say the overall atmosphere is more theatrical, All right. more diverse and even more symphonic. And this is because all the songs were done for the movie. So you've done the record and the movie at the same time? How, how was the, the composition? Uh, how did it work? Basically, I had uh, these 12 short movies in my head okay. without even doing a single song. And I just imagined what kind of music would bring these stories alive. And then I wrote the songs on top of those stories. So basically it was doing film music in reverse, first having the story and then doing the music there. And then uh, the whole concept changed once more so that we actually ended up doing a, a, a full length feature, like a dramatic fantasy movie with a plot with real actors, with a dialogue, all that. Uh, but it still includes all of those 12 original ideas that I had. So it's a pretty complicated process how everything came together. But how long did it take to do everything? Well, I had the idea in the summer of 2007, so it's been over four years now. Uh, the songwriting itself took about a year and a half. Then we were in the studio for about nine months, plus the mixing for about two and a half months. So it's been an incredibly long process. And we just actually just got the movie shot. Yeah. We were in Montreal for a couple of weeks and they are doing the editing at the moment, but it's gonna take another five, six months to get the movie done. So the album is gonna come out in December yeah. and then it's gonna take another five months for the movie premiere. All right. So pretty much uh, they're released together, pretty much. But it's like uh, there's a... There's a small gap month. of a okay, few months. A small gap. Okay. Few months yeah. okay. And are you uh, involved uh, as actors, I mean, as a band also in the movie, all the band, or is just you? Because I know you are in there, as, is it correct? Yeah, <laughs> I have this small part of a, a character called Tom47. Yeah. I don't have any lines, which I think makes it much more believable. <laughs> but you can spot the whole band in there as well. Um, we are seen in two different scenes, playing as a band on okay. the background of the scene. So it's more or less a cameo role. Okay. We don't have any lines, but uh, we are there. I remember about uh, Dark Passion Play that the budget 
to for the whole project was around a million euros that's what i read on the internet was that correct and uh, how was this time since you had also the movie to make uh, and uh, can this be like a, a very difficult uh, to deal with you know having such a huge budget and yeah, it was a long process it was <laughs> so long and i was being incredibly naive in the beginning thinking that uh, we would get the finance for the movie easily but uh, it wasn't that easy in the end but uh, the actual album cost a little bit less than Dark Passion Play because we used uh, some cheaper studios and okay. recorded a lot of the stuff for the album ourselves. So we had some savings there, but then there is this movie thing and uh, the budget for the film is about 4 million euros. Wow. And there's only so much that the band can put into the movie and we ended up uh, putting 1 million euros into the movie. But uh, we're lucky enough to get some uh, sponsors and okay. uh, some help from the Finnish Movie Foundation and all that. So Great. Um, is the London Philharmonic Orchestra involved in this new album as well? It was there since in, in the last three albums, if I'm correct. And yeah, it's uh, been there <laughs> since the once album. Okay. And, uh, we use the same people once again. The same orchestra and the same choir, Metro Voices, and the same arranger, Mr. Pip Williams. It's just, I couldn't imagine it being any better than it is. So that's why we keep on going back to these guys. And we know them, they know our music, they know what we're about. So. Uh, yeah, that just, I wouldn't change them for the world. Why them? Are they maybe a rock orchestra in a sense, as an attitude or something like that? <laughs> Basically, we want to have Mr. Pip Williams. He's so good at doing stuff for us. And he knows these people from the orchestra and the choir. He okay. wants to use them. And now when we have uh, done stuff with them for the past seven years, it's like you don't want to change. Okay because they realize w what we are about and we know them already. Yeah. So it's just a perfect marriage. So Story Time uh, has been chosen as the first single of the album and will be released on November 11th. Uh, in which sense this song is the best to uh, introduce the new record since this is a so huge project? Uh, choosing a Single is always one of those necessary evils that I don't enjoy so much because the album is always one big entity and just to cut away one song to introduce the album doesn't do the song nor the album any justice. But this time actually we were able to find a song which sort of represents what the album is about and I think it makes a perfect single track. It's a bit more on the heavier side, which is also a better approach than the previous choice of Eva and Amaranth. Mm -hmm. This really tells you what you might be expecting when you listen to the whole album. And it has a nice catchy chorus, and that's what all the single okay. releases need. Mm -hmm. And concerning the world of cinema, I know you are a big uh, fan of it and uh, an expert as well. And in the last few years, during your live shows, uh, you used to show on your keyboards some action figures of uh, Johnny Depp movie characters uh, like um, Jack Sparrow or uh, Edward Schisser hands. Um, which is your favorite Johnny Depp character and uh, did you ever have the chance to meet him? Uh, no, I never met him. <laughs> it all began as a joke because uh, my keyboard technician bought the doll and put it there and uh, I had no idea that he had put it there and I was like, okay, just leave it there. Yeah. Uh, it was kind of like an inside joke. Okay. But yeah, um, I love Tim Burton and his movies and I think uh, Johnny Depp is a great, great actor but he's not like among my favorites all right. of all times, but uh, he's still still really cool and uh, yeah, I do like the Jack Sparrow character a lot. I think he makes a wonderful job with that. Even though I have to confess that uh, I think all the sequels are crap. All right. But uh, the first of the Pirates movies was really good. It had that uh, boyish adventure thing, really imaginative. I really loved it. And then all the three sequels are just didn't do the trick for me at all. I'm sorry. And the doll will be there also for the next tour, since it's a joke? Or I have no idea where the doll is. I have one at home. <laughs> 
that I got from a friend, but I don't know where the actual doll is. So maybe we'll come up with something new this time. All right. Mm -hmm. um, so Nightwish uh, celebrate 15th anniversary, and um, you've been the most important metal band out of Finland in the last, actually, 10 years. Um, you also beat it, uh, Amorphis and Stradivarius, your much more successful than them. Um, did you expect so much success? And was this uh, your final goal when you for first uh, formed uh, Nightwish? Or uh, well, it was that <laughs> that you had in mind? <laughs> this was truly the last thing in my mind, or in anybody's mind. We never expected anything. We never actually it never even occurred to us that we could make it this far. I mean, I was in a university studying science and uh, the other members were doing whatever, and this was just a hobby for us. And suddenly it just, you know, blew up the whole thing. And we quit everything that we were doing and just concentrated on the music. It was a learning process. We realized that this is a really cool thing. This is something we want to do. And I found out that songwriting, it's really my number one passion that I want to evolve. So it, it's been a long learning process, but uh, the fact that we never expected anything, we never wanted to be, you know, musicians in the first place, and we, we never wanted to achieve these big sales or success, that is the fact that has kept our integrity throughout all these years. It's the same, still the same bunch of country hickeys doing the music that they want to do because the music is the fact that matters the most. And did your approach to music uh, change? I mean, songwriting and performing as well uh, in the years, since this became, in a sense, a job also for you? Well, when I look back at our first live show videos, I certainly hope so. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> And has Annette voice uh, provided a uh, different spin on your older material and influenced, in a sense, the new direction of the band? What do you think? Yeah, when I was doing songs for Imaginarium, I had her voice in my mind. Okay. I knew her vocal range, her strengths, her weaknesses, so it was a bit easier to do the songs. But still, I think what made all the difference with the new album is her confidence and her relaxed feeling. And uh, she did a really good job on the previous album, but uh, on Imaginarium she takes her scene to a whole different level. And it even came as a surprise to us. When she came to the studio, she had done her homework really well. She started to sing. We were all blown away. And that's one of the first concrete things you hear when you listen to the album, that uh, she's really out there doing a wonderful job. Just listening to Turn Loose the Mermaids or Scare Tale, for example, her vocal performance is astronomical, and I'm really, really proud of her doing that. And to know you just a little bit better as a person, um, Thomas, uh, what do you love to do in your spare time beside music? Do you have any hobbies, anything that you like in particular to do when you're not on the road and you're not playing keyboards? The first thing I usually always do when I get back home the thing that I'm going to do next Saturday when I get back home after three and a half weeks is just go to my... I have this campfire site next to my house, so I'm just going to put on a big fire and uh, sit there for a few hours and drink some red wine. Good. Yeah, that's the ultimate relaxation. But uh, the thing is that I, I like to be outdoors. I like to go into the nature, do long hikes in the woods and just live a really simple life. Okay. That's what I really like. Simplicity of everything is something that I grave for. And as a music listener, which is your choice? Music that you like to listen maybe in the car or uh, at home? Uh, I don't listen to that much music altogether, to be honest. I like the silence. But uh, when I listen, um, I usually put on some soundtracks, I put on some metal or just some good songs. I almost never listen to radio, so I'm not really into what's going on in the world. So, But uh, 
if yeah, basically soundtracks and metal. That's what I listen to. So you don't like a lot to explore. You know what you want to hear in a certain moment, maybe for your mood. You pick uh, maybe a particular soundtrack that you want to listen to. Well, yeah, that's right. And every now and then, like I said, I don't listen to that much music yeah. anymore. But every now and then, I hear something that really, really gets to you. And like this, I have to buy, and this I'm gonna listen to over and over again. I just heard a new album from Insomnium called One for Sorrow and that's one of those albums that comes to you only once or twice a year that yeah. really are like wow. I don't know, maybe I'm getting old and more cynical or something, you know. But uh Or wiser. <laughs> That's impossible. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Actually, I really hope that I'm getting wiser <laughs> day by day, but I don't know what's going on. You just, it's a funny thing, you just really enjoy the silence and the peace more yeah. than like 10 years ago. On the 25th of April 2011, uh, 2012, uh, next year, Nightwish will play the Forum in Milan, and uh, which is the biggest arena in town. Yeah, very giant place. Uh, will be the next tour actually a tour of just big arenas and do you have already on mind how the stage set will be? Will the movie be featured in the show? Uh, we are planning on it as we speak. I was just talking to the technicians a few days ago about the stage setup and all that. Uh, the pyros will definitely be there like always before. Yeah. Maybe some screens this time. Maybe we'll take some props of the movie on stage. To be honest, I don't really know. It's a bit too early Okay. about that. There will definitely be some strong visuals included on stage once again. And the set list will be the whole career of the band or will be much more on the new record because of the It's going to be in the same balance as before. Mm -hmm. A lot of the new stuff, but a lot of the old stuff as well. We're not going to play the new album from beginning to the end, okay. that's for sure. But there's going to be a lot of new songs naturally because it's an Imaginarium tour. Yes. But uh, a lot of old stuff as well, for sure. We can call it a concept album in a sense or not? I would use the term thematic album. Okay. For me a concept album is something that starts from the song one and continues the story throughout the album until the last track. But a thematic album is something which Imaginarium is, for example, that uh, um, deals with the same issues in each of the songs, but uh, still every song has its own identity, so to say. Was that confusing enough? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, for sure that gets us, you know, want to listen to the record um, more and more. Um, you always had very interesting opening acts for your tours, like Pain, for example, or Sonata Artica. But this time uh, I read that you chose a new coming band from Finland to come on tour with you, which are the Battle Beast. Is that correct? Okay. Um, why this change, you know, of um, having an, an unknown band this time uh, to put out on the road with you? You just want to take... Uh with you a band that you wish really wish you could help and um, I really like the album of Battle Beast I think there's something in there some sincerity that's quite rare these days and the fact that they're from Finland you always have to you know support your fellow country mates if you can so just made all the sense to take them with us Last question, um, so is Nightwish in 2011 and 2012 still your favorite baby or you have some other projects in mind that you're working on? Well, it is by far my favorite baby and uh, I love it dearly from the bottom of my soul. And. Um, at least so far during these 15 years, I haven't had the urge to do really anything else. I can, you know, fulfill all of my musical ambitions and perversions in Nightwish. I mean, I've done a couple of side projects playing with this Finnish band Kotiteollisuus, 
and uh, I produced a couple of albums for this Finnish band Indica and uh, just some little things. Yeah. But uh, when it comes to like doing a solo album or something, I just never felt the urge to do it. It's been enough. It might change in the future, I don't know, but uh, at the moment I'm happy with this. Do you want to deliver any special message to the Italian audience waiting for you to come back uh, in our country with your live show? And Naturally, I want everybody <laughs> to hop on to the card of the roller coaster and take the ride of your life. First in the form of the album coming out in December and then the show in Milan in April. You're all welcome. Okay, and can you leave a message uh, to our viewers of Linear Rock? Canadian or something like that. Linear Salute. Rock. Linear Rock, that's the name. Yeah. <laughs> Listeners, you mean? Listeners and viewers as well. Hello, all the listeners and viewers of Linear Rock. This is Thomas of Nitrous here, speaking and greeting all of you. Please check out our new album, Imaginarium, coming to you on December 6th. Thanks, Thomas. Thanks so much. No Thanks for Thank your time. You. <laughs>